Okay, so first of all, we have to make sure that uh, top and bottom are in descending order. They are. Since the top is has degree 4, we have to see 5 terms. The, yes, minus 4x squared. So 4x to the fourth, there is nothing for x cubed, so then minus 4x squared, and then plus 6x, and the last one is missing, but it's at the end, I'm fine. So then I divide by x minus 4. First question is, x times what is 4x to the fourth? And the answer is 4x to the third. Would you agree? Yes. And then I distribute and sub change the sign and write below like terms. 4x cubed times x is 4x to the fourth, and I subtract. 4x to the third times negative 4 would be negative 16x cubed, positive 16x cubed. Positive 16x cubed, then I bring it down the next in line. Is this okay so far? Yeah. Everyone? Everyone yes? Okay. So then the next question is x times what is 16x squared? So it's positive 16x, uh, 16x cubed. So it's positive 16x squared. I distribute negative 16x cubed. But now this is negative 64, positive 64x squared. And then I have 60x squared and then bring down 6x. x times what is 60x squared? And I have to write positive 60x. Is this okay so far? Yes. And then with uh, positive 60x times x is positive 60x squared, but negative 60x squared. And then this will be negative 240x, but positive 240x. And then 246x, and then nothing. x times what is 246x? Positive 246. Positive, but negative 246x. Negative but positive, and I have to multiply. 986. And this is 984. I'm sorry, 984. So then the final answer is 4x cubed plus 16x squared plus 60x plus 246, but plus 984 over x minus 4. Is this clear? Yeah. How do I check the remainder? We talked about it a little bit. So I'm a little bit concerned about this remainder. I don't know if this, I may have made an error somewhere. How do I check the remainder? Only for such a division. Only when the synthetic division is also applicable. I will, I will evaluate this uh, polynomial at 4. P, if I call that polynomial, P of 4 should be 984. If it isn't, this is an error. I have an error somewhere. So I like to put this function in the graphing calculator. In y equals, I have 4x to the 4th. And then uh, minus 4x squared. And then plus 6x. And I am evaluated this function for what? One more time. Four? For four, exactly. So when I plug in second and table, when I plug in four, if I don't get 984, I'm, it means that I made an error somewhere. But it turns out that I did get 984, so I'm pretty confident that there is no error in the calculations. However, this method will not allow us to, to check the remainder. If the divisor, the polynomial in the denominator is x squared minus 4. I can't do it. It's not going to work. But if the division, you use long division and synthetic division. But if you, use, if you can, you use synthetic division, then you can determine the remainder by simply plugging in. If you divide by x minus 4, you plug in 4. If you divide by x plus 3, you plug in Uh, negative 3. Negative 3. Yes. So we divided by x minus 4. I plugged in 4. If I divide by, let's say, x plus 3, I plug in negative 3. If you couldn't do that, could you just, like, let's say you didn't have, like, x minus 4, you said it would have to be like that. Or if you could do that, would you yes. be able to still multiply oh, yes. that first part? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Of course. That's always the case. That's always the case. Okay. But, but a quick check of the oh, remainder like is only when the divisor is 
in such a way that I can still use the synthetic division. Gotcha. Yeah. But yes, this times x minus 4 plus 984 has to give us 4x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 6x. Absolutely. That's always the case, no matter what. But this is a special case in which I can find a quick, I can get a quick check with, on the remainder by simply plugging it. Yes, Pamela, you all had a question. Yeah, whatever it is. Number nine. Alright, if you total. So nine? Yes. So it's x minus six everything squared uh, plus y plus eight equals hundred. If you're looking at the nine, that is x minus six squared plus y plus eight squared equals one hundred. Is this the number? Yeah. So that's the equation. Yeah. If you just plug it, that's the formula. Is this okay? Um, it also so has to be So if you have the center and you don't erase it, right? Isn't that how we would use the graph if we plot the center? Yeah. And, and then you, you have 10 units all, all, all the way. So. But I said in there, use a, use a unit of two. Okay. Oh, on the graph? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the center is 6, comma, negative 8, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 6, 7, 8, <laughs> right here. So uh, I have 8 units, so I need 2 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I graphed. So on this? Yes. Using units of two? Yeah. That's the In other words, one tick is two units. Yes. So if one tick is two units and we're finding the center, is it okay that the whole circle does not? Your radius doesn't fit yeah. on the graph. Don't worry. Okay, so so it's an excellent question. Here's what I would do. Here's what I would do. Because I always also give you a scratch paper, correct? Yeah. You can ask for any uh, amount of scratch scratch paper you want. Graph on scratch. You don't have to use this. Okay. Do whatever you want. Okay. Just give me a graph. But even if we did use that, if we drew lines down, you wouldn't care as long as you saw the graph. Exactly. It doesn't matter. But but it, it is a, you know, it's a legitimate question. If it doesn't fit, forget about my little grid. You say, I don't like your grid. I'm going to put it on the scratch paper. And I'm very happy. <coughs> Whatever method you use, I'm happy. Very good point. Anything else? Yes, please. Uh, on the same thing? No. No, on the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't sure what. You said 15? 13. 13. Uh, find the midpoint. So the midpoint is the average negative 5 uh, minus 8 is negative 13 halves. And negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 halves. You're adding the x's and divide by 2, comma. You add the y's and divide by 2. The average of x's, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. The average of x, you're adding two numbers and divide by 2, comma, the average of y. Please redo the problems you um, we've covered in class, in all sections. That's the best preparation for our test. Anything else? If we had answered 13 and of it's fine but we prefer fractions okay. you're not gonna I'm not gonna deduct points you could do that but we've never done that okay. we prefer fractions um, yes huh? which one are we looking at the, the very first one yes So you want me to solve that problem? Yeah, like I went through it, but I'm just going to move on to the next one. Okay, so we have x. We have x plus 13. We have x minus 15. We have x plus 11. 
And we have the whole thing, x plus 13, x minus 15, x plus 11. We have three um, x values that we have to put in, negative 13, negative 11, and 15, correct? So I have 0 here, and the signs are these. I have 0 here, and the signs are these. And I have 0 here, and the signs are these. All the same because they all are positive. They have their linear functions with positive leading coefficient. Is that OK so far? OK, and under negative 11, I have undefined, but I have 0 in the other ones. When the numerator is 0, the whole fraction is 0. When the denominator is 0, the fraction is undefined. So three negatives, two negatives, one negative, and no negatives. Is this OK? Is this OK with the first one? So finally, I'm asked to choose to choose negative. So this is a rational inequality, inequality, and I'm asked to use the negative sign. The negative sign is right here and right here, which means I will have to pick these. I will pick from negative infinity to negative 13, union negative 11 to 15. And how I write it, because it includes 0. So. Uh, x in the interval, negative infinity, negative 13, union, negative 11, positive 15 with the bracket. The only one that I cannot have included is at negative 11 because it's undefined. We had like four or five examples like this one, so please redo them. Yeah, yeah, well, we forget. I mean, it's not, it, it's not easy. That's why... I, I record everything so you can always go back. Is this clear now? Okay, other questions for me? Okay, so let's start chapter four. Chapter four is not going to be on, on this test. It's going to be on test three at the very end. We still have four and five and six and eight and a lot, a lot of work still ahead of us. Chapter 4, as I promised, deals with the last two functions, exponential and log functions. Log is the abbreviation of logarithmic. Exponential and logarithmic functions. Like before with all the other functions that we looked at, we will study them, we will graph them, we will talk about them, we will see how many different shapes they are, if they are increasing, decreasing, if they are one-to-one, -one, if they have inverses. Everything we've studied about functions so far, we're going to study about these two functions, and then we're going to solve equations with these two functions, with these two, um, I would say, um, new concepts, the concept of exponential, the concept of log. And of course, a lot of applications. Now, we looked at a lot of applications with uh, quadratic functions. If you remember, throwing a ball up in the air, right? That was one application of the trajectory, which is a quadratic. Then we looked at uh, functions with rational, uh, models with, um, with rational functions, right? What did we look at? We looked at... Um, a patient uh, who was given a particular medicine, how, how the concentration of the, the medicine in his, his or her bloodstream changed over time. That was irrational. Uh, what did we do with binomial functions? It was another um, function with, um, I don't remember, what was that application in which we were determining how many turning points and what type of polynomial would fit that. I don't remember the exact uh, question. What was it called about? What was the application? Do you remember? What we were trying to, to do there. Anyone remembers? Was it a word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Life expectancy. Excellent. Yes. Something about the life expectancy that was pretty excellent. Thank you. That's right. Well, what applications we're going to look here? A lot of different applications. For example, uh, whenever you get a mortgage or um, a loan from a bank, they will calculate your monthly rate using an exponential function. 
uh, another application. Um, uh, whenever you take uh, anything that you cook from out of the oven and you put it on the table, you expect this to cool down, right? From whatever, 200, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit to the room temperature. The temperature will decrease using the log function. It was modeled. Uh, earthquakes are measured, uh, are uh, modeled using log functions. Um, bacteria, the growth of bacteria, the growth of uh, populations like rabbits, rats, bats, people, they all are under exponential functions. Tremendous applications. Okay? So these are maybe the most interesting in terms of modeling in uh, real life situations than any other function that we looked at before. We looked at also the radical function. Remember, we, they were modeling the height of boys or girls from age of zero month till 60 months, and they were using an exponential function. The applications here are by far more interesting and uh, more visual, I would say, in a way. OK, so let's start with the exponential function. function. What do you think this is called exponential? Before you say anything, why did we call why did we call this function how? How did we call this function? Uh, Excellent, because it have a, has a ratio. Why do we call this function Oh, absolute oh, value. Right. Why? Because it has because it has an absolute value. What do you think we're going to call an exponential function exponential? <laughs> right. So here is the exponential function, where a is a constant. In this case, it's exponential because the variable is the exponent. The variable itself is the exponent. The base is a constant. OK, there is a problem with this constant. It cannot be just anything. However, there are only two possibilities for a. a can be greater than 1 or can be tiny between 0 and 1. Notice that I did not put the equal symbol anywhere. I did not put the equal symbol at 1. I did not put the equal symbol at zero. You cannot, we cannot have a negative base. And you can say, wait a minute, I can take negative three to the second power. Yes, I know. I can too. It's nine. But this is not an option for the exponential function. And now the obvious question is, how come? If that is possible, how come that I cannot have in an exponential function a base of negative three or a base of one? or a base of zero. The reason is very simple. You may remember it when I will, you know, we, I'll refresh your memory when I get to it, is because for this function it will be OK. But for this one it will not. The reason why they are in the same chapter is because they are inverses of each other. This is the inverse of that, and this is the inverse of this. So if we allow in the exponential for the base to be 0, 1, or negative, this function will not exist. That's the only reason. So keep in mind, there, this function, exponential function, will have two different shapes. One for the base greater than 1, and the other one for, for a tiny base between 0 and 1. One more time, no 1, no 0, no negative base. OK. So can anyone give us an example of an exponential function? with a base greater than 1 and an exponential function with a base less than 1. Just a pure exponential function. A simple one, 2 raised to x. This is an exponential function with a base greater than 1. Can anyone give us a, an exponential function with a base between 0 and 1? 0.5 right. or 1 half. Perfect, to the x. Excellent example, 1 half to the x power. Great job. Good. Let's look at both of them and graph them and analyze them and then use transformations and the whole spiel. 
everything we've, no, we've ever discussed about a function. So let's start with this. If I want to graph this function and look at it and draw conclusions about what it does and how important it is, blah, 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 then how do I start? When I graph a function, any function, always, forever, I find the domain. Excellent. Very good. It happens that this is friendly. I like to call this a function friendly. Why do you think I like to call it friendly? Is because it has or it has not the, it has or it does not have restrictions. It does not have restrictions. All real numbers, friendly, like polynomial functions. It's not a polynomial function at all. But it's like a polynomial function when it comes to the domain. Very nice and friendly. I can plug in anything on the planet I want. I will always be able to give a number back. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Some simple numbers to plug in. Can anyone plug in negative 2? Replace x by negative 2 and give us an answer. x. Uh, 2 raised to negative 2. What do I get for... Say it again. Excellent. Indeed. 2 raised to negative 2 is 1 fourth. Do you all agree with 1 fourth? Do you want me to show? Yes. Very good. So 2 raised to negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. A negative exponent creates a fraction. It's another way of writing a fraction. So 2 to negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so that's 1 fourth. Uh, let's plug in negative 1, please. Do you have to switch the So if you had... I'm not even talking about negatives. A negative exponent doesn't mean that the number, the result is negative. Because once you flip it, it just shows you the fraction part. So we'll be able to do that. A negative power does not guarantee ever. It may, because if I put negative 2 and I have negative 3 here, it's going to be a different story. Okay. But do not ever connect a negative power with a negative number. They have nothing in common. The negative power just tells you to write it like in that fraction. Exactly, okay. exactly. Awesome. So let, please plug in 0. One. Perfect. Please plug in 1. Two. Plug in 2. 4. four. Of course, in, uh, the chart will not be complete with what? Without what? What is this called? Excellent. Right. 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 We have that on the test, right? The end behavior. So let's go this way. We've never done this before, but this this is allowed for this one. We go this way. 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, 1 over 64, 1 over 128, 1 over a million. Where am I going? This is not possible. Everything is possible. There's no negative here. So where am I going? For zero. Excellent. Exactly. Y equals zero horizontal asymptote at negative infinity only. Okay, let's go the other way. Two, four, eight, sixteen, positive, exactly. We have never seen this before. This is unique. Absolutely unique. We have never seen this before. We have never seen a function that looks like this has a horizontal asymptote at positive at negative infinity, but no asymptote at infinity. So let's graph it. Ready? Negative 2, comma, 1 fourth. Negative 1, 1 half. 0, 1. 1, 2. And so on and so forth. Here's the graph. So this is the graph of 2 to the x. And what can we say about this function? Quite a lot. Number one, uh, is it increasing or decreasing on all its domain? Increasing. It's absolutely increasing, right? F increasing on negative infinity to infinity. 
Any questions? Go ahead. Anna? You mean this ordered pair? And this ordered pair? So that's how I plot. So negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 1, 1 half, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 2, and I just skip the last one. Is this okay, everyone? Okay. So this is increasing. Uh, domain is all real numbers. What about the range? Be very careful. This is extremely important. Range. Correct. Zero. It should be parentheses zero comma positive. Excellent. Very good. So if this function, let's also um, establish, is it one to one? It is one to one by the very good by the horizontal line test. This is one to one, which means it has an inverse exists. So it's one to one, therefore the inverse exists. I want to graph the inverse. We don't even know what it is. But can I graph it? Yes. Symmetric with respect to y equals x. Can you please give me a few points so I can graph the inverse? Would it be just one to one? Say it again. I cannot just pick and choose. I, like if you had, say it again. Two, of course, I have to reverse two comma one, so two comma one, good. It's it's the opposite of this point. It's the reverse of this point. It's not right, perfect. Like if you had the zero one, now you make it one comma zero. zero. Very good, excellent. Just give me one more. Negative. Let's say no. You cannot give me negative. One fourth comma. Yes, one fourth comma negative two. I agree. This is the inverse function. They have to be symmetric, as we know. Several times we discussed that, so we know now they have to be symmetric with respect to this line. They have to completely overlap. Don't expect my graph to be perfect, but obviously that's the situation. Okay, perfect, excellent. So the function is 1 to 1, is increasing. The base is greater than 1. Uh, both the function and the inverse are increasing. Now I want to establish something extremely important again. You told me that the exponential function is defined on all real numbers. This is domain. What is the range? You already gave me the range, 0 to infinity. I'm telling you ahead of time, and we discussed that, although we don't know much about this new function, the second one, log. What will be the domain of the log, which we, moving forward, we know it will be the inverse of the exponential. So please think for a moment. Think of the process in which you gave me the ordered pairs to plot, and tell me what will be the domain of the log. Or look at the graph. Exactly. Of course, it has to be reversed. It's always the case for the function and the in its inverse. Always the case. That's why that's why you gave me the point two comma one because now this is the domain. And this is the range for the inverse function. That's why you gave me 1 half comma negative 1 or 1 fourth comma negative 2, because this becomes the domain of the inverse and this becomes the range of the inverse, of course. Well done. So please keep that in mind. What do I conclude from here? Moving forward, here's what I have to commit to, to memory. Exponential, nice and friendly. I don't have any restrictions, no worries whatsoever. Log, uh, it's not defined everywhere. It will join two other functions that we discussed this semester that have restrictions. Anyone remembers the other two functions? This is the third one and the last one, I promise, this semester. There are two other functions for which we stated restrictions all the time. This will join that group of two. Which functions we stated restrictions always? Right. 
Excellent. Because the denominator cannot be radical. And the radical, excellent. The square root does not exist unless the quantity under it is positive or, or, zero. or zero. Very good. Yes? So I get the reverse thing concept. Um, but I don't, okay, so I don't get how the model, like, I guess how the model, I don't know. Like, when you said reverse, like, I understood what that meant. But I don't know what, I don't know. Like, what the law is. Oh, we didn't, we didn't talk about the log yet. You just put that there? I just wanted you to remember moving forward that the log is defined on positive numbers because we already graphed it. It's okay. this graph. It's defined on positive values. And it has range all real numbers. That's all I'm, I'm saying right now. Okay. We have not got, gone into details of the log. But I, I don't want to wait till section 4.2 to say, okay, what is the domain of this function? Since we already graphed it. So one more time. If the exponential is defined all real numbers and takes 0 to infinity, this function is the inverse, so it has to reverse. Remember, the inverse function. Function takes 1 to 2. The inverse function has 2 to 1. So domain range, domain range for the inverse. That's all I'm establishing right now. The name of the inverse function and the domain and range of the inverse function. But I have not gone into any details other than that. Very good. So let's look at an application. And before that, let's um, apply transformations on this function, or graph the second, the second shape first, and then use transformations. Let's do that. I think it's better. OK, same domain. I'm choosing the same numbers. I need a y coordinate for all those values. So let's graph the second shape. And then we look at uh, transformations and work problems. Okay, so can anyone play, plug in negative 2 and give us an answer for 1 half raised to negative 2? Excellent. For negative 1? Excellent. For 0? Of course, when I raise a number that is not 0 to 0 is always 1, and 1 half and 1 fourth. I want the end behavior. Let's go this way now. Uh, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 6, 1 over 16. Let's go this way. We're going this way. 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 16, 1 over 32. Correct. So y equals 0 horizontal asymptote at infinity only. Let's go this way. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Excellent. Let's graph. Let's plot these points. Negative 2, 4. Uh, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1 half, and so on and so forth. I missed this point a little bit. Sorry about that. So 1 half to the x power. Decreasing or, in or increasing on all its domain. Okay, so from left to right, as x increases, what does y do? It's smaller, but it goes half. So x increases from left to right. From left to right, y decreases. Right. So the function is always decreasing on all its domain. Is that clear? Yes. Always decreasing. Good. Uh, is it one to one? Does it have an inverse? It has an inverse. Oops. It has an inverse because it's one to one. Give me a few points so I can graph the inverse. I already found one. 
And we know that if the function crosses y equals x, the inverse function will cross at the same point. So give me a couple of points so I can graph the inverse. So would it be, I'm guessing here, negative 4, 2? So 2, negative 1. 2, negative 1. Perfect. Uh, 1, 0. 4, negative 2. Awesome. And I also want here 1. 1, half 1. 1, half 1. Excellent. Good. Good enough. Do you expect it to be a decreasing function? Yes. If... If this function is decreasing, so is the inverse. So this is f inverse. Symmetric respect to the y equals x. One more time. Let's write this one more time. This is so important to remember. If the exponential function is defined on one more time, friendly or not, all your numbers, friendly, and the range of the exponential function, regardless of the base, is 0 to infinity. What will be the inverse function's domain and range? Exactly. 0 to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. This is a function with problems or with restrictions. It requires only positive numbers. Not a friendly function. OK, so let's look at a couple of applications here. One, yes? Any questions? Go ahead, Priscilla. Which one? You mean this one? Yeah. It's the inverse function of this. Oh. We have no choice. Once we know that it's the inverse, its domain must be this forever. I can change that. And its range must be this forever. I can change that. Because these are two inverses of each other. Like we did with a um, cube root, like we did with other functions in which we had a comma b, b comma a. As long as they are inverses of each other, this is carved in stone. Better? Perfect. OK, so let's look at two different applications here. Here's one on page 475. Uh, let's look at 66. A big tragedy happened in 1986. Uh, it's an explosion of the nuclear pla power plant in Chernobyl in Russia. It says, uh, sent about 1,000 kilograms of radioactive cesium-137 into the atmosphere. The function f of x, 1,000 times 0.5 raised to x divided by 30, describes the amount f of x, f of x amount of this radioactive substance, cesium-137, remaining in Chernobyl X years, so this amount in kilograms. And X, number of years since 1986. If even 100 kilograms of cesium-137 remain in Chernobyl's atmosphere, the area is still considered unsafe for human habitation. It, find F of 80. First of all, I'm asking you, what will F of 80 represent? The amount, the amount of radioactive substance called cesium-137 still remaining how many years? X is the number of years since 88, so 80. 80 years since 1986. Oh, sorry. No problem. My handwriting, sorry. Good. So they say that if it's 100 or more, it says, uh, find f of 80 and determine if Chernobyl will be safe for human habitation in 2066. So this is basically in year 2066. So what do you think I'm going to do? Obviously, plug it in. So I have 1,000. 0.5 raised to 80 divided by 30. I've, I omitted to ask you, what kind of function is this? 
Is it rational? Exactly. It's exponential because it has a number as the base, and the variable is somewhere at the exponent level. There is no other x anywhere. So this is exponential. Very good. So let's plug it in. So in y equals 40 in the thousand, in parentheses 0.5, put the power for caret, in parentheses, x divided by 30, close the parentheses, and go to second and table, and put, put in 80. So the answer is 157.49 kilograms. So now I would like to put in 120. Yeah. We all went old school and like put like mathematics you did it on the calculator. We didn't think. But that's that's fine. The reason I want to do this is because I want to continue doing some of the calculations and I want to plug in more numbers. I like this. I don't I don't want to uh, redo the calculations every second. No. But it's up to you. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. Second and table, take a second and table set, and you have to have the independent variables in the ask mode. So second and uh, table set, and um, and make sure that independent is in the ask mode. I have a question. The last time I messed with this, I guess my table started at thirty-eight. Is that normal, or should I have a different? Like, just, it's zero. What I have you to change it? Change it? Oh, I have no idea. I, I just don't think it's okay. Yes. Yeah, just put in the numbers you want. So we want to put it. Is it okay? Everything okay? Yeah. Okay. So. So a hundred years later, I just wanted to see, and it's it dropping, it, it drops to 62.5 kilograms. Uh, but for 80, what would you conclude? What would you tell people to go home or not? What was the amount? Even if it's a, it's a hundred, they said. Even if it's a hundred, they should not go home because it's not safe for human habitation. They should, they should, they should not, not go home. home. They should not go home yet. Perfect. Okay, before we look at another application, I would like to uh, ask to um, look at um, 